to 1 Corinthians again at chapter number 11, commencing in verse number 23, verse 32. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, commencing in verse number 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Thank you. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to talk simply from this subject, do, this do in remembrance of me. This do in remembrance of me. Those of you who are my age and older will remember BTU. <laughs> Baptist Training Union. And we make fun of it and we, we scorn it and we laugh at it. But I'm going to bring it back this morning in this sermon, in this, in this worship. I will resurrect Baptist Training Union because we need to hear some things concerning what we do. There are only two ordinances which we Baptists recognize. Only two rituals that we adhere to that are described in the word of God. What we do this morning is not communion. We do not take the sacrament. There are seven or so sacraments in the Roman church and we do not observe sacraments. And what we do is not called a communion of sorts we observe the Lord's Supper. The ordinances that we observe in our church that we adhere to according to the word of God, the first is the ordinance of baptism by immersion. And the other is the observance of the Lord's Supper. We do not sprinkle in the Baptist faith. We are totally immersed go under the water, submerged in the water. Jesus, when he was baptized, went completely under the water. And the symbolism is that we rise from death to our old life to resurrection in new life in Christ. That's what baptism symbolizes. And then when we observe the Lord's Supper, it is also a symbolic ordinance. 
It does not matter if we take it on the first Sunday or the fifth Sunday. See how quiet you got right there? <clears throat> There's nothing sacred or biblical about the first Sunday. Some churches observe the Lord's Supper on the third Sunday. Some do it on the fourth Sunday. Some do it every Sunday. Some do it once a month like we do. Some do it once a quarter. Some churches do it once a year. There is no salvation in taking the Lord's Supper. And there's no damnation if you don't take the Lord's Supper. I wish I had one or two more witnesses here. That there is no grace being dispensed when we take the Lord's Supper. Uh, if you don't take it and you die, that don't mean you're going to hell. Because you can take it and go to hell. I, 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 would, I would run right over that again, but I'm running out of time. You, you, if, if taking the Lord's Supper can make you a Christian, sitting in your garage can make you a BMW. <laughs> Baptism does not save you. Taking the Lord's Supper does not save you. They are symbolic. It, it means something. There's a meaning behind it, but you've got to grasp what goes on behind the meaning because the act in itself cannot save you. I wish I had somebody to help me preach it. What, what, what does it symbolize? What is it saying to us this morning as we come around the Lord's table? Well, first of all, it's a time of commemoration. The word commemorates. The word commemorate means to honor the memory of somebody or something in a ceremony. To serve as a memorial of something. We come to commemorate Christ's suffering for our sins. And brothers and sisters, if you'll follow me through this text hurriedly, Jesus suffered in the Garden of Gethsemane. He suffered at the hands of God in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said to his father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. He suffered at God's hands in Gethsemane. And then he suffered at the hands of Satan at Gabbatha. The devil himself tried Jesus. He wanted Jesus to circumvent the cross and to go around God's prescribed manner of saving us from our sins. And then he suffered at the hands of men at Golgotha. They spit on him. They pulled out his beard. They struck him with their fists. They whipped him all night long. They scourged him. He was beaten with whips that had metal and pieces of rock at the end of it. That every time they hit him, flesh came from his bones. He was scourged. He was spit upon. He was beat. He was whipped. All of that the scripture says, for me. And as you take the bread and as you take the fruit of the divine, before you put it in your mouth, remember, he did it for me. He didn't have to do it. Uh, I was the one guilty, but he stood in my place. And every time we come around the Lord's table, it ought to remind us of the majesty of his grace and the magnitude of our guilt. Because brothers and sisters, you can't shout about grace until you realize how guilty you really are. Somebody ought to help me preach right here. The, the, these kinds of services meant something in the old church because they didn't play when it came to baptism. I wish I had somebody who could help me here. They, they would put us on what they called a mourner's bench. Yeah, I need somebody over 50 to help me shout right here. Uh, and, and sometimes you stayed on the morning that's been six, nine months because they want to make sure you wasn't playing with baptism because it, there's no salvation in it but there's a lifestyle that goes along with it. Before you went in the water, they had to see evidence that your baptism was going to symbolize that you had died to your own life. 
Many of us go in the pool a dry devil and come up a wet devil. Your, your, your life ought to be changed because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. You're going to help me preach this, won't you? Old things are passing away and behold, all things are become new. And they certainly didn't play when it came to the Lord's Supper. I can still see those old people in my church growing up as a boy. Uh, they wouldn't even let you touch the Lord's Supper table. Oh yeah, o only certain people could handle uh, the linen that went on the Lord's Supper table. Talk back to me if you can. Because they were serious about the things of God. But we are so cavalier and we joke and we laugh and we play in these services. But brothers and sisters, if God's death through Jesus Christ means something to you, you ought not laugh and joke when it comes to what he did for your salvation. Salvation is free, but it's not cheap. And since it costs God everything, when you come to worship, you ought to give God your everything. Um, it's about sacrifice. A whole lot of preaching now is, is about therapy. It's about making you feel good about yourself. It's therapeutic deism. It's impersonal idealism. It's secular humanism. It's all about the self. It's the glorifying of the self. About what you can have right now. Uh, I, I've had some experiences in the past couple of months uh, that I have not had in my pastorate in over 30 years. Uh, people who want to join the church now, they want to interview me. Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 they call in the church. Uh, Hazel is here, she'll tell you. They, they're calling to set up an appointment to interview me. Uh, to see what my stance is on this or that and, and what does the church have to offer. And of course, I haven't met with any of them yet. But, but if, I, if, if I quit being evil and devilish and meet with them, I want to ask them, what do you have to offer? What, what, what do you bring? Because the church is not a restaurant. The church is not some fraternal order. The church is not a sorority or some a nightclub where you come and get your felt needs met. The church is the body of Christ. And as the body of Christ, there's an element of sacrifice that goes into what we do. And if you're not willing to die, you're not willing to follow Jesus Christ. Because if you put your hands to the plow and look back... You're not fit for the kingdom of God. What do you bring to the kingdom? See how quiet you're getting right now? That, that's, I suspect, how some of these people want to come to church to see if you've got a nursery and, and uh, see if the pastor's married or, or, or find out do you have a singles ministry or, or what, what, what are y'all doing about this or what are y'all doing about social justice and what are you doing? I'm going to preach Jesus Sunday morning. And then if you come back next Sunday, I'm going to preach Jesus again. And if you come back the Sunday after that, I'm going to preach Jesus again. Because I don't know nothing that will straighten out a marriage but Jesus Christ. I don't know nothing that will straighten out a crazy child like Jesus Christ. I don't know nothing that will handle a hellish boss on your job like Jesus Christ. I don't know nothing that will lift up a bow down head like Jesus Christ. Because when you start talking about Jesus, whatever your trouble is, Jesus can handle it. I need somebody to help me testify that there's a name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus. Yeah. It's a time of commemoration. And then, brothers and sisters, there's sure enough a time of celebration. The word celebrate means to make a special occasion. Uh, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it, it comes from a Latin word which means to attend a feast. And when we come around the Lord's table, 
It's a feast. Uh, it's a feast that, that, that celebrates God's compassion towards us. Uh, God's compassion towards us. We were lost and without Christ. But he had compassion on us. We were like sheep without a shepherd. But he had compassion on us. Think about all the sins you've already committed. And God let you live. God gave you strength to get out of bed this morning. God let you come up to his house with all your low down ways. With all the stuff in your past that God should have cut you off. But he's still blessing you with a job. You still got a nice place to sleep tonight. Food on your table. Everything that you need to be provided for you, God has provided. Not because you deserve it. Brothers and sisters, that's, that's, that's the difference between folk who know something about mercy and grace and people who think they got it all together. Mercy is God holding back from us what we deserve. And grace is God giving us what we do not deserve. We don't deserve to be in this house this morning. But God's been so faithful. I said, God has just been so faithful. I, I'm going to say it one more time. God has just been so faithful. He's carried our sins. He's borne our griefs. He's wept with us when we have wept. He's rejoiced with us when we have rejoiced. And when we come in his presence, I don't ever get tired of telling God thank you. Now I need somebody here like me as I hurry who got a reason to praise God. When you think about where you came from, you got a reason to praise God. Born on the wrong side of the track. Didn't have a good house to live in. You, you could count the pairs of shoes that you had because it was maybe one or two. But here you are right now when you got up this morning, you had to decide what to put on. You had to make up your mind of what you were going to eat. And then if you don't want to eat at home, you can decide what restaurant you're going to drive to in the car that God provided. With the money that God gave you to spend. With the appetite that God put in your body. How dare you get ready to go enjoy God's blessings and don't take a minute to celebrate. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. And if you don't want to celebrate, move out of my way. Because I've come to give God praise, not just because of what he's done, but because of who he is. Uh, this, 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 this matter of celebration has to do with the God-man, Jesus Christ, who paid for my sin through his death. And he guaranteed me eternal life by rising physically from the dead. And because he lives, because he's alive at the right hand of God with power, when I die, I won't really be dead. Oh, oh. As a matter of fact, the scripture calls it sleep. I need, I need a Bible reader here. When the believer leaves this world, it's not death, it's sleep. It's sleep in terms of only God can wake you up. My name is in the Lamb's book of life because I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And when he comes back, I'm going back with him because just like he got up bodily from the grave, I will get up as well. That's cause for celebration. I said, that's cause for celebration. Because I've got some people over there. I've got some loved ones who are over there. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me pause a minute. I, I was going to rush through that, but the Holy Ghost said, hold on just a minute. 
And, and let me not rush through that. Um, when, when I go home to Eunice, uh, every once in a while when I go home to Eunice, I got some family there. It's, it's not the same going back there when your parents are not there. Uh, home will never be home again uh, when your mother and father is not there. But, but now and then I go down to Eunice to visit with my brother, uh, my brothers, and one of my favorite places to go is Walmart. Because uh, Walmart is a big deal in Eunice. Uh, we, we got the Galleria here and, and Sharpstown Mall and uh, Deerbrook and, and Alameda Mall. You can shop in, 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 in all of these deals, specialty stores here in Houston, but, but Walmart in Eunice is the Galleria. Uh, and, and I stop in there every time I go. I don't need, I don't need no ice trays. I don't need no waste baskets. And I just come out of there with waste baskets and, 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 and paper towels because I just love going to Walmart when I go to Eunice because I meet everybody I haven't seen in a long time. And then I start talking. Uh, to people I went to high school with who are still in Eunice or people who are away from Eunice but they've come back and they're at Walmart like myself. And so we're standing up talking and people are in the line and I say, go around me. Uh, I'm talking. I'll, I'm, I'll get there in a minute. I don't mind. Go around me. Thank you, they say, and they go on to, uh, to the checkout counter and they just go on and have a good time. And I'm still talking with who I'm talking to. And three or four more people have come by and they've gone around me because I'm in the line talking to people I haven't seen for a long time. And I just let people cut ahead of me because I'm enjoying myself in the line. But sooner or later, I got to get up to the checkout counter. Somebody ought to help me preach it. I, I've been delaying it because I'm having a good time with the people that I've been talking to in the line. But sooner or later, I've got to get up to the checkout counter because I can't stay in Walmart all night. This world is not my home. And I've got some family who has cut ahead of me and went on out through the checkout line. But one of these days, I'm going to get up to the line and I've got to check out. And when he calls me, I will answer to my name. I'm having a good time right now, but my name is on the road. And so I celebrate that when this life is over, I'm not staying in no graveyard. Somebody will help me shout right here. No graveyard will be able to hold Terry Anderson. Have I got a witness here? Um, I mentioned to the people who were here this morning that all you have, all I have, all we are in this life are tenants. Uh, we are tenants with a lease agreement. And one day, we're going to get a notice from the landlord that our lease has expired. That's all you got? That's all you got? That's all I got? is a lease agreement. And I mentioned to the people who were here earlier, if you're over 50, you're subleasing. Because it's not as long as it has been. Somebody ought to help me here. And with lease agreements, there's some breakdowns that happen from time to time. Somebody ought to help me talk here. If it's not your back, it's your knees. If it's not your knees, it's your shoulder. In other words, there's a leak in this building. And sooner or later, your soul is going to have to move. But thank God if you are a believer, you got a forwarding address. When the landlord tells me that my lease has expired, I'm going home to be with the Lord. That's something to celebrate. There will be a reunion. There will be a resurrection. 
But before the reunion and the resurrection, hear me as I close, there's going to be a rehearsal. Uh, some of you have a problem giving God praise. Uh, shouting and thanking God for his goodness. When, when we didn't have a lot, I think we shouted more. Uh, our praise was more enthusiastic because nobody had anything. And so we were just grateful that God let us get to church on Sunday morning. But now that we've got two cars in the garage and jobs and opportunities that we've never had before, it seemed to me we ought to be more thankful, but it seems that we are less thankful. But let me tell you what you do when you praise God on Sunday morning. It's rehearsal. It's rehearsal because that's another act. When the curtain closes on this side, that's another act on the other side. And if you haven't rehearsed on this side, you won't know how to act on the other side. Somebody, somebody gonna understand what I'm talking about right now. My shout is a rehearsal. How I praise God is a rehearsal because God's been so good to me that I've got to praise him. I said I told you I had a reason to praise him, but then I got a right to praise him because he saved me. He raised me. He brought me out of darkness. He made a way out of no way. When I was lost, he came and found me. When I didn't even know him, he was looking out for me. When I was on my way to hell, he turned me around. I got a right to praise him. And so my praise is just rehearsing. I'm just practicing for when I see Jesus. I need somebody to help me preach right here. I said, I'm just rehearsing for when I see Jesus. Now let me tell some of you quiet people something. You think we cutting up right now. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you dignified people something. Let, let me tell you sophisticated worshipers something. Y'all looking at those of us right now who are giving God our best hallelujah. And, and you, you, you haven't said it out loud, but in your mind, you might have already said that's too much. Uh, we, we've been here too long. It, it don't take all of that. You don't have to make that much a noise. Be still. Be quiet. I can't hear anything Reverend is saying. You're making too much noise. You, you cutting up too much. I don't think you got nothing when you make all of that noise. Well, I think I ought to tell you before I quit, speak for yourself. Don't you, don't you, don't, don't you try to tell me how I ought to praise God. All God has done for me. All the ways God has made for me. All the doors God has opened for me. All the sins God has forgiven for me. All the mess God got me out of that I got myself in. And then you're going to tell me it don't take all of that. Well, you go on and speak for yourself. But some of us in here are just rehearsing. You think we cutting up right now? You ought to wait until I see Jesus. You think I'm making noise right now? But when I see Jesus and fall down at his feet and thank him for all he's done for me. And since I'm just rehearsing, I think I ought to start right now. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your delivering. Thank you for your rescue. Thank you for your salvation. 
thank you for your Holy Spirit. Now, however you thank him, you ought to do it right now. However you praise him, you ought to do it right now. If you cry when you praise him, don't let nobody stop you from crying. If you raise your hands when you praise him, don't let nobody stop you from raising your hands. You might want to tell somebody, you might want to move now. You might want to go sit somewhere else. Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, if the Lord opened doors for you, help me praise his name. If the Lord been good to you, help me magnify his name. If the Lord made a way for you, Help me tell God, thank you. Why don't you grab somebody? Tell them I'm just rehearsing. I'm just rehearsing. I'm cutting up right now. But you ought to be there when they crown him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Jesus, y'all know him, don't you? He died. Didn't he die? But early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave. And I'm glad. I said, I'm glad. I'm glad he loved me so that he died in my place. Why don't you hug somebody? Why don't you grab a neighbor? Shake him by the hand. Tell him you know what you just did. You just touched a miracle. You just touched a blessing. You just touched a breakthrough. I was down and the Lord picked me up. I need a shouter here right now. I was sick and the Lord healed my body. I need a praiser here right now. Come on, tell him thank you for delivering me from that mess. Thank you for getting me out of that bad relationship. Thank you for bringing me out of that terrible childhood. Thank you for bringing me out of that abusive situation. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He brought me. I know he's all right. come to commemorate I come to celebrate but then it's also a time to contemplate because if you eat and drink unworthily you eat and drink damnation some of you are sick and weak and have even fallen asleep because you are playing with what you ain't got no business playing with. No, no. If, if, if you're not in a right spirit with your brother and sister, when the Lord's Supper tray passes you, you pass it on. Because taking the bread and eating of the bread and drinking of the fruit of the vine and you're not in a right relationship with your brother or your sister, you let the plate pass you by because you don't want to eat damnation. You don't want to eat and drink unworthily. The scripture says, leave your gift at the altar and go be reconciled with your brother. Because how can you love God whom you have never seen and hate your brother who you see every day? 